are rain. It is fabulous to hear new music from you in 2023. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for that. Thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. Oh, it's been a while since we've had you uh, around, so it's good to catch up and fill in the gaps. Yeah, it is good. I mean, we were just talking off air um, before. I think it's, yeah, the last time we actually spoke or saw each other face to face in the flesh was pre COVID. So I reckon it's been about three years, give or take, something like that. Yeah. But it's yeah. nice to see your beautiful face again on my computer screen. Look, I'm, I'm honored. You've, uh, you've <laughs> left us too. You've, uh, You've uh, moved out of Victoria. You're a Sydney person now. I, yeah, I am. I, I moved out uh, Christmas 2019, just before all the stuff happened. Um, and, yeah, I've been here since. So I'll be coming up to four years, I think, if my maths serves me well. So it, it wasn't going to be a permanent move. It was sort of just testing the waters. But I think Sydney's going to be home now for the unforeseeable future. But I do love it here. I love Melbourne and I love Sydney. For the record... I love them both equally. Okay. Well, there's very much a Melbourne music community. Is there one in Sydney? There, yeah, there definitely is. I have to say, I feel um, for me, when I came here, I didn't have, um, you know, I had a handful of friends. Um, but then coming out of lockdown, um, I would say most of my friends here are musicians and they are very much in a, a, a music community. I also think it's different because it's um, it's smaller here. I feel even the landscape's different. You know, Melbourne is a lot more spread out. Um, you and I were talking about it earlier. It's it's more condensed sort of in the eastern suburbs, inner west of Sydney. So I feel like there aren't as many venues, obviously, in Sydney as there are in Melbourne. So you do get to know each other, um, I guess, faster more easily and it, it yeah everyone's sort of around the corner so i definitely think there is a community here hmm. let's talk about uh new music uh driver in particular the ep which i would love to see you perform the songs from driver in an austin texas bar i reckon that would be the yeah. perfect backdrop that, for, for that, this record. i'm glad you said that i think that's we're, we're doing um we're doing our ep launch in two weeks and we're doing it at my favourite bar pub in Sydney in Surrey Hills, the Hollywood Hotel, which I like to think is kind of the closest thing you can get here to that sort of, you know, blues dive bar kind of scene. So good pick. See, once again, this is why the pro, you get it straight away. So well, I yeah. appreciate you saying that. Yeah, what I, what I loved about it, I mean, it's dirty, it's grubby, it's bluesy, it's rock. Uh, yeah. Where were you sourcing, you know, your, your influence, your sound? For this record, uh, this is much deeper than I've heard you go in the past. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it definitely it was. Um, we came up. Well, I guess it, it it first came to fruition during. I hate to keep going on about lockdown, but being at home, only having the home studio set up, I've I've never considered myself a producer. Certainly not an engineer. Um, doesn't come naturally to me. Anything technical like that, it's it's not my nature. So. <clears throat> I just had more time at home to kind of fiddle and make music that I enjoyed listening to. So listening to a lot of JJ Kale um, and and I love a lot of his early stuff where it was like really, really lo-fi drum machines juxtaposed with his blues guitar playing. So I was just noodling little demos and um that's how it came to be, just making stuff for myself. And so when it came time to put something out I just put it out independently and I went you know what let's just leave it rough as it is because I like it like that and I don't have a label a major label with any input so I can do that which is pretty crazy that I can just make a song and then just put it out yeah it's pretty wild people, people can come and see you and you know here's the five tracks you can go away and listen to as well exactly mm. exactly so that's how it came apart I guess it's sort of uh the first time that I've made music just purely that I like to play and listen to is the simple answer. Yeah. Yeah. And that, 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 that cliche description of music, you know, the driving sound, which really is quite an apt description for the title track driver. True. I never thought of that before. Yeah. Um, the, the title driver uh, came uh, sort of just, I've always got a list of words, uh, titles, band names, just on my on my phone that I keep, and driver was just a word that I liked 
I like the feel of it. I like the sound. Um, and then, you know, the meaning behind it, I guess, is driving through life and and like we all do and just the consistency just to keep on going. And then um, the, the riff came up about separately and then I just sort of mashed them together because I thought that it was sort of a driving riff. And then, so I'm glad you picked up on that because that's, that's, yeah, what I was hoping to come across. Mm. You've got your uh, Robert Plant there in the background. I've got my Robert got Plant. I've got two. I've got, got one. Yep. I've yep. only got one. Yeah, I've only got one. You've got two. But uh, I, I guess, come on, let's go. It was very Led Zepp. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. I like that. You like how yeah. I've, gone the, I've gone from the Robert Plants in the background to the Robert Plant yeah. record. But yeah, see the, the segue. You're the pro that you are, the segues that you just... Yeah, um, I tell you what, this J.R. Rain, Paul Cashmere sitcom, we have to work on that. It's good. It's good. It is. <laughs> it is the chat about nothing. Yeah. Um, come on, Lisa. I like that you said that, that that's got a bit of a um, Led Zepp because Led Zepp are a band for me. My uncle, um, who wasn't that much older than me, he was a massive or still is a huge Led Zeppelin fan. And, um, you know, I grew up listening to Led Zepp and I love them, but I wouldn't call myself a... Um, you know, Led Zepp fans are pretty diehard, aren't they? I imagine you're one, Paul, right? Well, you know, you can listen from, you know, the start to the finish. And, you know, what I loved about Led Zeppelin, the entire career uh, was over a 10-year period, you know, like yeah, and it's it. pretty much 1969 to 1979, and that's it. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I would say, I mean, when the Levy Branks, you know, tracks like that and Bonham's, I mean, Bonham's my favourite drummer, or oh, it's a tie between Bonham and um, I would say uh, uh, Copeland from the police. Wow. Yeah. Very different. But, yeah, going back to Common Let's Go, that was, once again, that was a demo for an old band uh, that I was in that I actually recorded the bones of that on a four track, and that's been sitting there for about eight years. And I always loved it. I mean, I'm it, once again, I'm, I'm, I'm mumbling, my voice is out of tune, but when we did a, an actual proper studio demo for it, I thought it sounded a bit naff. And then it's just been sitting and I thought, why don't I just mix it a little bit? I can't play piano, so I just did a single note. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and then I bunged it out there. So it's been a very weird process for me. It's It's been quite nerve wracking putting it out there because um, it is so rough. Mm. It's, you know, as I'm sure you know, listening to it, there are drum samples in Come and Let's Go that I don't even think, you know, match and quantize properly. So the fact that you said it's got Let Zep uh, energy, thank you very much. I'll take it. Yeah. Well, let's get on to the next one then, the uh, the uh, song Slow, a, a, another real bluesy uh, track. And we're like three tracks into this EP now. And, you know, what I was noticing once we got to this point was the consistency. You know, we go from track one to two to three and mm. it just flows through and as as it does all the way through for the five tracks oh thank you um that track yeah it came about uh playing a gig six months ago with the ford lasers um uh jimmy and jacob a uh, little trio that we put together two of my dear friends and we were just playing a gig at lowly uh tavern in abbotsford and just riffing on this little riff and um, I thought it sounded cool. So I, I actually recorded that um, in the hotel we were staying on my little portable Pro Tool setup. So it, I guess where, where, where it does flow is these are all songs that I've been playing post-COVID um, solo and with the band. Um, and, and it's, for me, I have the most fun when I lean more into to blues music and, and that sort of rock and roll music. So I'm, I, I appreciate you saying that, Paul. Slow uh, was a preview of the EP, as was Play That Part. Uh, you know, do we call them singles? Is that the correct term anymore, Eve? I don't know, Paul. I'm, you know, I'm 40 in a couple of years. I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm just winging it. Uh, I saw that Spotify, it, it's an EP, but it's in the single section. I don't know. I guess they were like teasers. And I think because I'm putting it through my own little indie label, I just call it a single because it is a single, right? One track. Yeah. Um, that's what the kids do these days, isn't it? They just do singles. The kids, yes. The kids. The, the <laughs> yeah. young kids. Do they even do albums anymore? I don't know. You've you've got to that point where you're talking about the kids. Ah, what are, what are the, the kids, kids doing? 
Ah, uh, the kids. No, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to keep it cool, right? You know, still having a crack. Yeah. But you put out, play that part. I think that was the first one I kind of remember. Um, and that, that, yeah, that was another one. I think that was a demo of me. That was like 10 years ago, trying to sound like Queens of the Stone Age. Right. Yeah. I think that was, yeah, pretty much a direct rip. And uh, Swim Up Bar Blues. Are these uh, five tracks that you've played live? Have played all of them live um, at some stage in different sort of realms. Uh, Swim Up Bar Blues is the only one that is completely a new song that I did once again from playing a live show that turned into a, I hate the word jam. I don't know why I don't like the word jam, but it came from a jam mm -hmm. and uh, the riff stuck in my head and I had uh, the Swim Up Bar Blues lyrics just sitting there and um I just mashed them together. So that's the only one technically that is fully new. You know, it was it was recorded about a month ago. Yeah, we've just had someone walk into the room. Oh, who's this? This is Winston. Winston. Hey, Winston. Say hello to J.R. Rain. There you oh, go. Winston. Oh, Winston's gorgeous. Winston just hello. got home. I think he's been to work. He's just uh, coming. Yeah, good. He's fucked off early at 1.30. Yeah, he, he's oh, one of those workers along St Kilda Road building. Yeah, yeah building gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he's uh, he's taking got, his suit off. I know he's not he's, showing off his voice at the moment, but he's got a great voice and would love to be yeah. back in singer. Um, oh, I would love that. I, I wish my two dogs were here, but they're um they're at mum's place. She's dog sitting this weekend. <laughs> oh, Winnie's gorgeous. All right, off you go, Winnie. So, 2022, we had Texas Sun. Not a lot yeah. of new music last year. Was that just about it? Yeah, not a lot of music. I was um I was doing a lot of filming last year um on on a Aussie soap opera that took up quite a bit of time, and I also felt kind of after lockdown it was a really weird thing. Before lockdown happened, had all these shows booked, was doing this end of the line thing with some of my other mates. We had about sixty dates cancelled, like everybody. So I had a bit of a reflective moment. So coming out, I felt like last year for many of us was the first year we kind of felt back to normal. Um, and I just sort of wanted to take time not playing gigs, I guess. I was also, I wasn't one of those people that wanted to get back out there uh, because the few shows that I did play, they were pretty weird, Paul. They were pretty weird. Like the vibe was different. So I think that was the main reason I didn't put more music out. Uh, and I just did a cover and that that was only from um that was just a live recording that I did at home when I did a little Instagram live session thing. So you're right. I didn't really put music out last year. I didn't even think about that. But that's my, my answer. Yeah. 2017, 2018 was very proactive, wasn't it? Um Go on Easy, not only Go on Easy One, but Go on Easy Volume Two. Oh, just that was a, that, so did you just happen to have a lot of songs? Or was it just a very creative period? That was, I guess, there. Uh, th those two albums are uh, from different bands, singles, um, incarnations of different things. And I finally either had the rights to them or thought bugger it, and I just whacked them all together. So I guess they're obviously they're, none of them are hits, but I guess you'd call them like vo greatest hits volume one and two. And Go On Easy was um, uh, a lyric taken from um, Remember to Breathe. I always thought, I don't know why I always like Go On Easy. I always like things about like uh, moving, you know, going somewhere, that, that sort of driving part to segue back into driver. So, yeah, yeah it was it, that was actually quite busy for me, putting stuff out and gigging. And I think it was, um, I'm glad that I did that before it all stopped. Yeah, it's interesting looking at your timeline. The first single was 2006. I mean, you're coming up mm -hmm. to 20 years over the next couple of years since that first record came out. Yeah. That, does, does that suddenly make you veteran performer? I think so. I think I'm a heritage act. I'm like oh, a look, junior heritage act. You'll be, you'll be on goal 104. I'll be, I'll, 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 you know, I'll be playing your dad followed by you. <laughs> Hey, you know, we're all living a lot longer, so it's uh, it's 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 a good thing. Well, that's why I'm calling the kids the kids. <laughs> but I, don't, I, I, yeah, it is God. Yeah, it, it has nearly been twenty years. Um, part of me feels really proud about that that I'm still able to do it in some fashion, and then part of me also feels like, wow, 
20 years. I think if you've done anything for that long, it's um, you've maybe all of a sudden I'm quite retrospective. I'm going to get off this interview and <laughs> on for the rest of the day. No, it makes me feel good. And yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Junior Heritage Act, Paul. Junior Heritage Act. I like junior, that. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. I could be so bold, I'm going to, I'm going to. Junior Heritage Act. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Junior. <laughs> J-H. <laughs> Well, lots to do. Hopefully, uh, there, there there is the launch, as you said, in Sydney. What about shows in other parts of the country? Uh, so, yeah, so September 2nd, um, Saturday, September 2nd, we're doing it at the Hollywood Hotel in Surrey Hills in Sydney. Um, so doing that with the Ford Lasers, bunch of guests, it's going to be a hoot, free entry. And then after that, we're announcing the next Sunday all of our East Coast shows. So we're going to be doing from... Vic up to Queensland for now. And then we're, you know, maybe going to take it further over summer. And then uh, back home, back home to the, uh, the wife and kid. That's it. You got to come back home. You got to bring the bacon as they say, isn't that right? You know, <laughs> you know you've know, you got, you've got Winnie as well. Look at Winnie. He's... Yeah. Well, you know, we have to keep him in the lifestyle he's become accustomed to. Can I call him Winnie or is it one of these? Oh, no, he is Winnie. Winnie. He is Winnie. Okay. Right. Winnie, you've really got a new friend in here, Winnie. Oh, I think he's out watching reruns of Home and Away. Yeah, of course, of course. He, he just he, heard he, that. He's a, he's a big fan of your character on Home and Away. He, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. There, there he is. is. Oh, Winnie, you can help me wrap up the interview. Oh, my gorgeous. Say goodbye to J.R. Rain. Say thank you for joining us here at Noise 11, Mr. Hi, Rain. Winnie. I wish, I wish my kids had been here to see you, Levon and Darves, but next time. Okay. Beautiful boy. Off you go, and uh, he's got a gig coming up at a pub near you soon, Winnie, so you'll be able That's to get it. And, and Doc Henley pubs only. He's got actually a good drummer. Check check this out. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, he'd be very quick. Yeah, yeah. Nimble wrists. It's what, you, <laughs> it's what you need. All right, there we go. Thanks so much, Paul. Over, over and out, Mr. Rain. Please hang up and try again. <laughs>